O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. In his presence are majesty and splendor, strength and honor in his holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate Holy Mass on this third Sunday of Winter Ordinary Time. So let us prepare to celebrate our Mass as we call to mind and acknowledge our sins, our needs for God's healing grace. Lord Jesus, you dispel the darkness with the light of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you take upon yourself our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the, the highest, highest, and on earth peace to, to people, people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we, adore you, we glorify you, you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, begotten only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun, and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness. For there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light, light and, and my, my salvation. salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light, light and, and my, my salvation. salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. <coughs> Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light, light and, and my, my salvation. salvation. A reading from the letter, first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be unified in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? 
or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good to celebrate this Holy Eucharist with you this morning. Again in these wintry days and continuing to listen to God's word who wishes to reveal God to us in this ordinary time, but also help us to grow in what it means to follow Jesus Christ. And so there's such significance in the readings always, but in a special way in these seven weeks of ordinary time that will lead us to the season of Lent. Always think about that new beginnings in our lives, often they can appear at different times that they can make a significant difference and how we see life, how we see ourselves and other people and experiences. A few weeks ago, we celebrated the beginning of a new year, inviting us to reflect on the last year, its blessings, its challenges. Maybe sometimes easier to remember the challenges that can haunt us, but also the turning of the calendar is a time to really look and maybe dream ahead with wonderment of what this new year of 2023 will mean, what will it bring, what experiences will we have? It is in the scriptures today that we speak of new beginnings and the whole history of salvation, which you and I continue to be a part of in this new year. It was after Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, and after his temptations in the devil, in the desert by the devil, is that he started his ministry in Galilee. So we went from the southern part of Israel to the north and a very significant kind of way. And one of those readings, one of those reasons, as he said, he went to live in the village of Capernaum by the sea, by the Sea of Galilee, is that after John's death by Herod in Jerusalem, it was a pretty dangerous place. So maybe that was part of it. But Jesus going to begin his, his public ministry in the northern part of Israel was really a significance of, of fulfilling the prophecy that we heard in the first reading from Isaiah this morning. And so it was in that goodness that very much to escape danger, perhaps for a while, although Jesus never seemed to be afraid of danger and challenge, but it was really to fulfill the scriptures. So just a little bit of history to help us understand why he went to the land of Nebulon and Naphtali in the north, is that it was in the year 1000 BC that God promised King David that David's kingdom would last forever. But it was by the year 922 that the 12 tribes of Israel, which made up the kingdom of, of King David, David, is that they were split. There were 10 tribes that moved to the north around Galilee among the Gentiles, and there were two that remained in the south, which would be including Jerusalem. It was in the north called the tribes of Israel, in the south, the tribes of Judah. 
In 722 BC, the huge, very powerful Assyrian army destroyed those 10 tribes in the north and scattered the Jewish people among the Gentiles, among the pagans in very powerful, powerful kinds of ways. The first two tribes then, with those who survived that, those attacks by the Assyrians, the first two tribes that were sent into exile were those of the tribes of Zebulon and Nephtali. And so it is in that consideration that Jesus, who was so intent in bringing the goodness of, of God's promise to restore the kingdom of David, to be able to bring the tribes back together again, he went where the first ones were sent in exile, separated from all the others. And so it was in that great move that Jesus said in another place in scripture, I have come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Very much a part of unifying and bringing people back together. And the promise of the kingdom that even King David's kingdom didn't last forever like promised, but the Lord's kingdom would just be that. It would last forever, not just in this world, but ultimately referring to the kingdom of heaven, which is eternal. And so we think back to the words of Isaiah in that first reading and recognize, recognizing in the midst of that exile is that Isaiah was speaking a very powerful word of encouragement that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. It was a message of hope, a message of trusting in God, that God will bring us back together again. And it is out of that, as we can, if we would continue in this morning's gospel, that Jesus chose 12 apostles. And in that wonderful statement of how to bring back and unify the 12 tribes of Israel that had been split for so many centuries. And the continuance of those 12 would be the church that you and I are very much a part of today, leading us deeper in relationship with God and leading us to the ultimate of God's plan for salvation of all humanity, ultimately to be experienced in eternal life. And so it's a time for us to turn again continually away from whatever might separate us from God, like things that had separated the Israelites in lots of different ways, for us to grow in our understanding and the, the goodness of how you and I are called to be witnesses today, to be a light in the building of God's kingdom, right in the midst of a world, of a society, sometimes a church that is very divided in many different ways, like St. Paul talked about in the second reading this morning, is that we call to the real work of the Spirit is all about unity and acceptance and respect and all of those God values that are the reality of the kingdom of God. So for us to be witnesses and work in our own simple ways and our relationships for the, the bringing together of God's people in many different ways. The readings of the day remind us of that time that we really were echoed in a very popular Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Remember those words that a ransomed captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. You and I live in the midst of that goodness. And the new beginnings in our lives connect with how do we continue to grow a new perspective, new vision, faith vision, in so many different ways as God's people in this ordinary time. And so we profess the great faith of the church. I believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death, death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us now offer our words of intercession. That the gift of grace may assist Pope Francis, Bishop Donald, and all who share and minister faith to make the light of Christ known to their faithful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those entrusted to govern, that they do so with a true concern for those in need, serve justly, and respect the value of every human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For God's blessing of health in body, mind, and spirit throughout this new year, and for all who need healing and encouragement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For individuals and families who are experiencing financial burdens due to the loss of a job, homelessness, or suffering of any kind, that they may find strength and hope knowing that God is with them in their trials, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of Christ may be upon all who have died, especially Gary Brueger, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special intentions that now we now recall in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer these petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end, we pray. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess, profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come time. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Please share his word of peace with those who may be near to you. Peace of Christ be with you, Jesse. Peace of Christ be with you, Andrew. Peace of Christ be with you, Joshua. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away. The sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, roof but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> As our Mass is now ended, we go in Christ's peace. Thanks be to God. On behalf of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison and Monsignor Larry Bakke, its Director and Parochial Administrator of Our Lady Queen of Peace Parish in Madison, who was the presider of this sacred celebration of the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, a sincere thank you to you for taking the time to share your faith life with us this morning. I'm Jeff Hoban, the Executive Director of Camp Gray. My sons Andrew and Josh were our acolytes. We are members of St. Joseph Parish in Baraboo. It is a blessing for us to assist in bringing this television mass ministry of the Apostolate to you. For our brothers and sisters who are deaf and hard of hearing, the Apostolate sponsored the closed captioning services to assist with their participation in this morning's Mass. We continue to be blessed by the generosity of the owner of WISC-TV, the assistance in production and presentation of the Mass by the management and staff of the station, and their mutual concern for persons of all faiths living with disabilities in their own homes and health care facilities, which makes the weekly TV Mass possible. As always, may you have a beautiful coming week, and may the Lord continue to be your light and your salvation.